Hi, Hi Nev. Hi. Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Where in Canada from here? Born in Guelph. Grew up in Mississauga, Mississauga in Toronto. And how often do you get back here? I was here a couple of weeks ago up in Muskoka. I get here about three, four times a year. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. So you, so you, you, you still feel Canadian? Absolutely. Right. Anything you do when you come back outside of like seeing family? Do you have a ritual or anything? I get bit by mosquitoes a lot at the cottage. An important Canadian. <laughs> That's one of the heritage Last moments, time. I believe. <laughs> it's, it's getting bit by mosquitoes. Exactly. Sitting and trying to enjoy an Alexander <laughs> Keith's by the lake. Exactly. Um, I, I, I really love this film. I, th- I found it very, very powerful. Great. Um, and I, I can't imagine what it's like to actually be in it. Um, mm. You know, uh, I just want to start here. The, the film is about obviously a major public health crisis mm. happening both in America and in Canada, right? now. Um, but it feels like something we're only just beginning to start talking about. Growing up, was opioid abuse something you heard about? No, not as a child. No, absolutely not. No, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it, is, it is funny. In, 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 is it something that you gained more empathy or more perspective from making this film? Yeah, I mean, I certainly was aware of it before I was sent this script. Um, but when I was sent it, I was um, really happy that it was being made. I thought it was a really important subject matter and certainly wanted to be a part of helping to tell that story. You, you, you play a parent to two young kids in this film. Uh, so you are personally a parent to two young kids. I in, am, in, yeah. in, in this film, you play a mother who is terminally ill mm-hmm. and can't protect for her child. I mean, I, I have to imagine that's an interesting experience for you. Really? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting as an actor, you know, we pull things from your life in order to play the character. And I certainly feel, you know, I've played mothers before, but as a mother now, it's a completely different experience. And certainly, you know, I have two sons um, and putting myself in the place of this woman who has to imagine departing her child. It was a tough journey to imagine. It was hard to put myself in that place. I mean, because... I could ima- I could imagine very clearly how devastating that would be. Um, it was challenging. I got I got home from making this picture and I cried for days. Is that so? Yeah, and I I, I knew it was intense. I knew it was an intense experience, but I don't think I realized quite how intense. Um, it's a great film and it's so important. And you know, obviously, there was a lot of conversation about this epidemic, um, this genocide, in a sense. Um, and and the tragedy of you know half a million people now have died uh, of this crisis and um, you know so I you know preparing for the film I watched a lot of documentaries so you're witnessing a lot too and uh, yeah I don't know it's hard it was hard to separate myself um, and I think important not to um, and then good to sort of come down from it after the film but yeah but how do you do that how do you come down from it after the film cry a lot yeah I guess so, right? <laughs> cry a lot and then try and spend time with my children and do fun things with them and and process it and and stop watching the documentaries for a minute um, <clears throat> be with my family and my loved ones did they know about the role yeah well my my kids know i'm my my eldest son is seven and the youngest is 18 months so it might be a little bit too might be a bit hard to explain <laughs> to the 18 month old. mom's yet. really intense yeah yeah yeah. here's why mom's been <laughs> crying, know if crying i'm ready for, for that yet <laughs> but i never i never thought about that I, I, I guess i mean i i try not to ask too many questions like this but i guess if you are a mother and you're playing a, a mother going through a situation like this it's going to change things for you on the way out yeah absolutely yeah, it makes Definitely. sense. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that this is part of a string of d- different roles for you. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a clip of another one. Your assertion is that the president was unaware of what was happening in his own White House. Honestly, he was quite busy campaigning. But surely he knew the effects of Mr. McCallum's work, these exploits. No. The president, and I've been with him out on the stump, he likes to shake hands. He's not paying attention to social media. That's uh, uh, Nev Campbell, Canadian actor, uh, on season five of the Netflix show House of Cards. My name's Tom Power. This is Q. Um, I, I heard that after you played that character, reporters started to ask you about politics for the first time they in your did. career. Is that, is that the case? Yeah. <laughs> it's like suddenly I'm a pro. Um, <laughs> it was interesting for me. I, you know, coming from Canada and learning, learning the politics here and then going to America, learning the politics there. And then I lived in England and tried to learn the politics. You know, I was kind of all over the map. With there's, nothing, there's nothing going on in the politics in England. Nothing, so. <laughs> nothing at all. Or in the States. <laughs> <laughs> or in Canada. Or in Canada, Canada right, exactly. Right. Um, no, but it is funny how people suddenly think you're a pro at what you're playing. Um, but it was a very interesting set to walk on. Um, you know, CNN was playing in the hair and makeup trailer every day. You certainly, even the crew, were very much aware of everything that was going on on the Hill um, because it was so much a part of the story that we were telling. Uh, and Bo Willimon, certainly the creator of the show, really had his ear to the ground and, you know, direct phone calls with, with um, Washington uh, while he was telling the stories. And it was, you know, it's very strange that that show sort of jumped the gun on stories that happened, you know, eight months later every time we seemed to put them out. Um, 
So it was an amazing show to work on. Unfortunate outcome yeah. um, in the final season. I was not involved in the final season, but you know, I, I feel for that cast and the audience because there was no way it was going to be great the final season. You know, um, because you can't lose a lead character and and be able to tell the story in the way that it it should have been told. Um, but I think it was great for the cast to be able to at least finish it out and for the audience to at least have an ending to the story. It it, it is funny when you when you told me that. People get you confused with being like, you know, you, you, when you play a politician on TV, yeah. people assume you know an awful lot about politics. Yeah. I think I read that differently when I was reading about you. I, I read it as all of a sudden you went from being asked questions about Party of Five mm. or being asked questions about, you know, maybe when wins your birthday and what's your favorite balloon mm-hmm. to maybe more substantive questions about politics and stuff like that. Well, certainly. And, and that's lovely. I think it's always nice when people start to see you for more than your original roles. Um, but I did find it humorous, to be honest, that you know, even when I went to DC, we would go. The cast would go to DC, and we were like rock stars there, <laughs> because I, I, you know, I think the people over there really enjoyed watching the show too. So, I don't. Know. And similar to Castle on the Ground, did this make you did doing a role like that make you reflect differently on the on our political system or anything? I think there was no way not to be reflective on the political system at that time while I was shooting. Anyway, you know, we were going. They were going through the election, going through the campaign. So I think every American was paying well. Half the Americans were paying attention. <laughs> um, I'm, I think all of Canada, most of the world, were paying attention. Um, so we were certainly immersed in it a little bit more deeply, but everyone was involved. So at the beginning, before we turned the microphones on, I, I mentioned to you that I had a surprise for you. Yeah. And you you tried to guess what it was. What was your what was your guess? <laughs> I thought you were going to bring out like an episode of Catwalk. So the, what you're going to hear is not from Scream. Okay. It's not from The Craft. <laughs> it's. It's not from Catwalk. Okay. It's, it's not about a Coca-Cola commercial with Brian Adams. Uh, it's not. Okay. <laughs> we went a little deep. Mm-hmm. Take a listen. Oh, no. Reed, I got to get out of here. There's nothing in there to be afraid of. No, you don't understand. I hate closed places. It's the room that scares me. <laughs> <laughs> Neff Campbell. <laughs> Is that Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. You know, I've not seen it. You were I've in. A, never you seen were the episode. fourteen when you were in. Uh, I'm afraid. Are you I think afraid I was fifteen. Dark? Fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've never seen your episode. I've never seen. Do you that. have it? No, 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 no. No, we don't, we're not going to play. We're not going to play it for you. We'll send it to you later. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. By the way, what a what Just a to re- put me in my place. What a reaction to. Can we can we show it to you? No, 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 no. <laughs> We all have those things we want to keep in the closet, honestly. By the way, the the name of the episode that you were in is What's... called. Um, are you ready? Mm-hmm. The Tale of the Dangerous Soup. <laughs> you know, people love that show. Oh, yeah. People love that show. I go to these Comic Cons sometimes, and there's a massive audience for that show. Like, people who can quote every single line from my episode. Look really? out there with the oh, really? woman hand in there. She is, she is a, 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 a. We'll talk later. She is one of those Are You Afraid of the Dark super fans <laughs> That's uh, great. Uh, That's out great. there. But it, I, I feel like that episode did air at a pivotal time in your life because it was just before Party of Five and just before Scream. You know, what was your biggest ambition at that age? Dance. You know, I was going to be a dancer. Um, I was in Phantom of the Opera was my first job um, here in Toronto, which was an incredible experience. And um, I really thought that dance was going to be the thing. And then I just had a lot of injuries. Um, I'm sorry. No, you know, it is. listen, I, I, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've ended up all right. And the truth is, at this age, I'm about to be 46. I wouldn't be dancing anymore, and I don't know what I'd be doing. You know, it's hard. It's Dancers are athletes. It's a hard journey, and it's a quick one. Um, so I'm actually really glad that I was able to, as an artist, find something else that I was passionate about creatively. Um, but but it is so. such a tender age to lose that that kind of um, yeah. yeah yeah absolutely. But I like I said I was very lucky to jump into work and get work where it kept me busy and I, I didn't have to lament it too much. It was hard though. though you know the first really ten years after I stopped dancing I couldn't couldn't listen to classical music couldn't go see dance performances because it was too painful. It's um. Yeah, it's interesting that. And then I got to make the company, and that really helped me. That really helped me feel as though I'd sort of come to a full circle with it and, you know, done something with it. Right, because it's, it's a film about dance. Yeah. And a, a, friend of mine, a friend of mine who actually works on this show wrote an essay about that one time, about oh, how wow. she, she was also a dancer, mm. a ballet dancer. She also, she, I think she suffered some sort of injury. I don't know what, what yours was, but she suffered yeah. some sort of injury. And then she went back for like a wreck 
ballet class uh-huh. to kind of go in and, and try it out. And, Just you know, exercise after, it out. After, after she had gotten a bit older. Yeah. And she said it was actually quite moving for her. Good. Uh, have, good. Have, you, have you been back at the... I haven't, you know, I've actually just in the last few weeks spoke to another dancer who was a principal dancer at City Ballet and New York City Ballet and we were talking about maybe, maybe venturing into a class on a Wednesday and like would that be hard? Would that be hard for you? Oh, it'd be so hard. I mean, it wouldn't Not just physically. It wouldn't like, emotionally be hard for me anymore. I'm older. I get it. I'm not, I'm not that anymore. I don't have any expectation that I would ever be able to be at the level that I was and certainly I haven't been doing it. I also had spine surgery a year and a half ago so I'd have to be careful in the class anyway. It would really just be to hear the piano and do bar and enjoy it and have a laugh to be honest. Um, But yeah, no, the company was really the thing that helped me sort of finish with it. What do you know now that you wish you had known back then? (sighs) Um, Not to take any of it too seriously. Um, I think it's hard when you're young. You're just you're so fearful of judgment and um, getting it right and um, what people say. And uh, I think I'm a bit more daring now. Um, not that I wasn't daring when I was young, but I think I'm more daring with my performances. Like I'm willing to fall on my face. And I just don't read articles. I don't read press at all. Um, it's too hard, and certainly the internet can be really cruel. So, um, you know, it's not helpful anyway. If you believe in what you did, and you feel like you've done a good job, or you know, at least exercised something and told a story in the way that you wanted to, I think that should should be enough. And hopefully, some people get something out of it. I don't want to be presumptive here, and, I, and again, I don't want to be some sort of like armchair psychoanalyst. I do get, I do get like a calmness from you. Hmm. Like, uh, uh, I feel like, because um, I think about your career, because you were on one of the biggest shows of all time on, yeah. on Party of Five. You go on, yeah. and, and Scream is like the biggest, you know, movie in the world. And then, mm-hmm. I mean, these are things that can either um, haunt you. Yeah. I mean, not, not to be. No, you're not to terrify me. <laughs> <Or not, laughs> go home and cry into my pillow to bring, tonight. Not to bring home Scream <laughs> is what I meant. Not to be, you know, haunt you in <laughs> literal sense. <clears throat> they can they can either haunt you or they can kind of follow you around. Mm. But you you seem like you've, You've kind of been through it, and you've kind of come out on the other end of it, ambition-wise and career-wise, and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, I think there certainly was a period of time um, after the first few screams were out, and I was in LA, and all I was getting was offered horror films, and I just nothing was happening in the way creatively that I wanted, and I was hiding in my house because the fame was at a level that was jarring. And you know, I moved to England, and I just did some theater, and I went and watched a lot of theater, and learned a lot, I think, and just worked and experienced life over there. Um, and then came back and had my first child. I had the intention was to work, and then got pregnant. And my agents were like, "That's not what we meant by come back to America." Um, but it took a couple of years off with Caspian, my son, and then you know was lucky that the things that I chose and also came that came to me were you know Mad Men, um, a bit of Grey's Anatomy, then House of Cards, and and that. That was the quality of work I had been hoping to do 10 years before. Um, so for me, maybe I needed that break. I needed to go and learn. I needed to just step away. I needed people to forget about my other work for a minute. Um, so actually, maybe it all worked out exactly as it was meant to. You know? So what's your what's your relationship with nostalgia now? Because I, I have to admit, I was a little nervous reading the beginning of that introduction for you, where I kind of talked in, with, about you in the frame of the 90s. It made me a little bit nervous. Yeah. But needless to say, it is a big part of your life yeah, and a big part absolutely. of your legacy. Like, what's your relationship with nostalgia now? I'm going to uh, a Comic-Con this weekend um, with all but one of the entire first cast of Scream and The Craft <laughs> this weekend in a couple of days. And I don't know whether to be excited or terrified, um, but I'm actually really excited. It's going to be fun. I think, you know, those movies did great things for me. I was very, very lucky. I'm really grateful for them. They were an absolute blast. I worked with wonderful people. Wes Craven was f- phenomenal. Um, the Craft meant a lot to a lot of people, which I never expected. It's not the kind of thing I would have thought making a movie about witches, you know. <clears throat> but it's nice to, you know, it's nice to be acknowledged for things that touch people somehow or that they really loved or that they look back on or they say, you know what, I, I watch it every Halloween because it's a blast. And any resentment that I may have had for moments in my life where maybe at times when I was only getting offered horror films, it's gone. Like, that's gone. I'm really just grateful for it. Well, that's what I'm, that's what kind of what I was getting at earlier. I'm not yeah. to yell at you here, but like, <laughs> that's kind of what I was getting at earlier was when I said I'm getting the sense of calm and peace off you. I think mm-hmm. that's what I meant. I mean, when people are in big movies like that or you get a horror movies, you can, you can find – I mean, it's, it's no different than a band refusing to play their biggest hit. Right, right, right. 
Um, no, I'm just grateful for them. Honestly, yeah. I had a lot of fun, and the cast were great. The writing was great. Um, people loved them. There's nothing to be negative about. Are you the kind of person to look back or forward? Are you? Uh... Yeah, I, I think that's natural, isn't it? We all do. Um, but I like to look forward. I like to actually. I like mostly to be here, <laughs> to be right here. Um, On CBC? Yes, exactly. <laughs> right here with my mug of water and this microphone. <laughs> um, no, but you know, it's that, that, that and thing. Young just and young Fred Penner talking present. to me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, you mean the present. Yeah, yeah the present. You know, um, I really enjoy, uh, I really enjoy my kids, my family, and having that time with them, and I don't worry about much else. And if I get to be creative once in a while, that's fantastic. And I certainly, do, I am an artist, and I do need to go out and do that. But mm. I also really just enjoy enjoying being a mom. Well, on that, I know there'll be a riot if I don't ask you about this. There's the Party Five reboot happening. It is. Are yeah. you, you going to do something on that if they ask you to? They have not asked. I don't know that it would make sense that they would. I think the concept is fantastic. I don't know if you've heard what the no. concept is. Um, you know, with our characters, our parents had died. Um, and in this new series, the parents are not dead. They've been sent across the border because I think they're Mexican. Um, the family is Mexican. Um, so it's like their parents are dead. They can't get to them. They can't be with them. And I think it's really strong and very timely. Um, so I hope they get it right, which I imagine they would. It's the same creators and writers. So I think they'll do a good job with it. And I look forward to seeing it. Well, it's been so nice to talk to you. Congratulations you on the film. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much.